Well, thank you for joining us today on Side by Side. And we're going to be thinking today about Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16 to 19. I'll read those verses. There are six things the Lord hates. No, seven things he detests. Haughty eyes, lion tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows discord in a family. This is all about division. It's all about creating division. And that sense of breaking down in relationships. I don't think we've ever lived in such a divided world, or at least the divisions in the world which all we exist have never been as obvious as they are. People seem to be much more out there, as it were, with their views and their opinions. And we have this very strong sense of two sides growing up in the world in different places. In America, we see it in a very powerful way as a consequence of the most recent presidential election and then the outworking of that. I know some of my friends in the States and family tell me about the the way this has worked its way into churches and families and divided communities. We know how division is so dangerous and destructive. We've seen it in our own country, political divisions, and how the way we are taught or influenced to see things and see people can develop prejudices even before we've ever got to know people. I remember the first church I became involved in as an adult had two buildings, half a mile apart. When I inquired into the result or the reason for this result, I was told, well, that was church one and then they had a falling and then they set up another church. This is complex mostly, but at the root of all of these divisions, there is sin, pride, envy and fear. And I've learned over the years that one of the key things about relating people and people relating to me is just that we learn to accept each other without accepting everything. There will be things that we don't always agree on. There will be areas that we maybe see in a different way because of our own circumstances, our background, or our own deep convictions. But I think our Lord teaches us the importance of acceptance of people. I think that's what you see with him. The Lord Jesus comes alongside all sorts of people. He doesn't begin by telling them what he thinks is wrong. He often builds a relationship based on trust and acceptance and kindness. And then they can have a proper dialogue and conversation. If we want to have any hope of a serious engagement, we have to begin, I think, by the respecting and accepting other people without any conditions. The literary device that's used in this chapter, in this particular section of the chapter here, is one which speaks of a number of things and then one thing. And you come across that Hebrew idea or this way of doing things in Proverbs 30 as well. One or two places. The idea is you mention some and then you mention one. And the one at the end is really the thing that it's all about. Understanding that, we see here that the thing that's really being spoken of is sowing discord in a family or causing division. And of course, isn't it important for us that we really aim to do what we can to bring and keep people together? And if you look closely at these verses, one of the things you notice how they speak about eyes, tongue, hands, heart and feet, all parts of a human body, which reminds us of what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, when he talked about the the people of Christ as a body, you are the body of Christ. Jesus, the Lord Jesus, is the head of the body. And the way the body functions successfully and grows maturely and is effective is whenever everybody in that body treats each other in the proper way so that one part can't look down on the other part, but instead we tend to uplift people. We, in an excessive way, affirm certain things, and that's okay. But pride, that's the haughty eyes, lies, the lion tongue, hands that do evil, unkind actions, hearts that plot evil, inner thoughts and evil desires, and false witnesses. These are the sort of things that hinder the good. Now, mostly it's in our hearts that this real battle is, isn't it? People don't generally come out and say, 
to people's faces what they really think, but they show it by their actions, and it's largely passive. We call it passive resistance. We just don't do good to them. We don't do anything to them. We maybe just merely ignore them as though they don't exist. But we need to remember that our own hearts are full of many of the things that we may accuse and criticise others for. We know that only Christ is above reproach. We know that Christ has shed his blood for all those people we maybe don't find easy to like or get on with. How do we love them? Well, we begin by recognising them as belonging to Christ and praying for them. And if possible, then acting in the direct response to how the Holy Spirit will lead us. And oftentimes you and I will be reading the scriptures and something in the Bible speaks to us. Maybe there's a person in our life that in the church community that we have really just put at a distance. We just don't engage. And maybe the Lord speaks to us about doing something simple. Maybe just an act of kindness or even getting in touch to ask them how they are. In this process, whatever it is, all these activities that are going on, the, the haughty eyes, the lying tongue, the hands that kill, we need to be the full stop in the sentence, as it were. For if something is unkind, unfair or unhelpful, and it's being said or done or proposed about someone or something, we should be the full stop. It ends with you and it ends with me. Surely that is the right thing to do. This is setting the whole thing in the right place. It doesn't mean we ignore sin or wrong, but we follow the Scripture's way of addressing it, which is privately, personally and directly, and always with the awareness of our own sin, conscious of the moat in our brother and maybe the, the great plank in our own eye. There was a massive dying to establish this body of Christ at the cross, wasn't there? It cost the Lord Jesus so much to win this body, this bride. And there's going to be required a lot of personal dying to maintain the health and the unity of this body. Remember how this little section was introduced to us. There are six things the Lord hates. It's a very strong word. It's not often in the Bible that you read about what God hates, but I think it's a strong word to be taken seriously. You see, division doesn't have to happen when people go out to war. It really happens in very small ways. It happens in the quietness of people's private homes and conversation over a coffee. It can happen so simply. And so you and I have to maybe think today, is there something we are doing or something we ought to to start doing, to build a greater trust and unity in the body of Christ where we are. Maybe there's somebody whose feet we need to wash, as it were, metaphorically, which means serving them. Is there someone that we can serve, who we ought to serve to build that relationship up? You know, there's nothing as attractive as a community of people who have love towards one another, cooperation as opposed to competition unless the competition is to outdo each other in love. And that's what the Lord wants us to be. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ died, to win his bride, who one day will be perfect, but just now is maybe not so perfect. But we are called to be part of the process of that bride being more perfect. And just in case you you need encouragement, the photograph that I put on today is a photograph of two people walking through the valley side by side. That came to me through an email from CCF in America, the counselling organisation. And I looked at it and then I thought that would be great for a kind of a good sort of standard photograph to represent what we do. And so I thought, I'm going to try and ask them, will they let me use it? And I did. And within a day, I had a positive response. I just want to use that as an encouragement. Sometimes we think if we do something, nothing will happen. Don't believe it. If you do the right thing in the right way for the right reason, motivated by the Lord, it'll be great. So let's all go for it today. Let's build trust, respect and love. And the Lord bless as we do.